Hey everybody, my name is Alex with Hake Hardware, and in this video, we're gonna go over post as a service. This is part of the version 1.3. I had an article previously that covered it pretty well. This is basically going to set you up with the knowledge that you need to make sure that when you implement post as a service, you kind of understand what's going on. I do a lot of guide videos, and oftentimes it's pretty difficult to give step-by-step -step instructions for every single way of doing something. I use Docker Portainer on Linux. I mainly stay in the CLI. I know that's a very small slice of people that are in Space Mesh, but it's just a lot of work for me to create videos for every single scenario. So what I'm gonna try and do is maybe something a little bit different in this article. Uh, I'm actually gonna, there's gonna be a few videos and there's gonna be a few articles. And I'm going to try and just give people a general understanding of what needs to be done. And then I might do a step-by-step -step guide for, you know, my specific use case. But basically we're gonna start with, you know, what post as a service is. And this diagram was in my last article, but this is the end state. This is what we're looking to do. Alpha is my node service. And this is going to run a Go Space Mesh instance for every single set of post data I have across all of my hosts. So I have four hosts here with post data connected to it. Um, and these nodes, there has to be a node for every set of post data. In a future version, they're going to allow for just a single node to handle all of your post data if you want it that way. Right now that's not implemented. If you don't want to have to change things again, maybe wait for the one-to-many relationship between a node and a post service. But for now, for every post data, you have to run post service, and that post service connects to its own Go Space Mesh instance. So if you have 10 sets of post data, you're going to have 10 post services running, and that's never going to change. You're always going to need a post service. Well, I mean, it, it could change, but at least in the near term, you're always going to have to have post service connected to your post data. And then currently, for every post service, you're going to have to have a Go Space Mesh or Node service hooked up to it. So that's a one-to-one. -one. So if you have 10 post services, you have 10 Go Space Mesh instances. And eventually it's going to be, if you have 10 post services, they can all hook up to a single node uh, or Go Space Mesh instance. That obviously is way better because then you don't need 10 copies of the state.sql, uh, which can fill up a lot of space. So right now, again, it's one-to-one. -one. For every post service, you have to have Go Space Mesh. So how I have it set up, is on my alpha host. I mean, I just use the phonetic alphabet here, alpha, bravo, charlie, delta, echo. Uh, I have a folder for each of my ghost space mesh instances like I used to have, you know, when I was just running version 1.2.13. The difference is for each of these folders, there's gonna be a config and there's no smashing ops in there. You basically say smashing start is false in the config and everything else is handled by the post service. And then you're also gonna to have to have the key.bin from your post data. It has to be the same key.bin for your actual post data here. It needs to correspond to the correct Go Space Mesh instance. You have to have the key.bin in there as well. And if you're converting, and there's gonna be a section on conversion, but basically if you're converting, what I did was I went straight from version 1.2.13 to post as a service version 1.3. And there's a few extra steps you have to do there because another upgrade or, you know, quote unquote upgrade for Space Mesh is they've moved the NIPOST files and the post.bin to the node state SQL file, which is in the same directory as the state.sql file. So if you were just running, you know, version 1.2.13, you upgraded to version 1.3 and you were running it in what's called supervised mode. So there's no post service in supervised mode. I could theoretically run version 1.3 directly on like Bravo host and have it handle post data one. And then I could run another Ghost Space Mesh instance. It's basically exactly like it used to be with version 1.3 if you run it in supervised mode. But if you run it in unsupervised mode, then you do smashing uh, start as false because you're not actually smashing it. And then everything's handled by the post service here. 
and the post service will just talk to the ghost base mesh instance. So on the alpha node, it's just a folder for each of these set up very similar. All the uh, Docker images or containers work exactly the same. So I have a Docker container for each of these nodes and they point to this folder to get the config, to get the state, to get everything else. That's exactly how, if you followed my ultimate space mesh guide, it's basically all the same here. And this alpha host runs 24 seven because it is the one that interacts with the blockchain. You can see space mesh over here. It's the one submitting your proposals. It's using your key.bin basically to do everything on behalf of your post data. So I could shut off Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo outside of cycle gap and just have alpha node handling all of the communication with the blockchain. Now comes cycle gap. I need to flip these all back on. The post services will register with the ghost based mesh instances. And then at some point during the cycle gap, it will trigger, uh, you know, it'll receive the challenge from the poet. It'll proof, it'll submit that proof to the poet. Uh, and then eventually you'll submit an ATX or uh, if it's your first poet cycle or cycle gap, you'll just register and you won't uh, actually do anything else. Uh, but anyways, because I converted, I had to move over a bunch of files from my post data into my node where my key.bin goes, and then it will automatically do the conversion for you. So in the guide that I'm likely going to write, it goes over going straight from version 1.2.13 straight to version 1.3 post as a service, which is more steps, uh, but I'll, I'll go over how to do it. So that's basically the setup. So for the node service, like I talked about before, it has to run 24-7. It honestly runs very similar to 1.2.13. Then you have post service on each of your uh, hosts with the post data. You have to run a post service. And then there's some certificates that you need to generate. Uh, I think this is, from what I heard, this is going to be optional for like private networks. If you're just running on your home network, you don't really need certificates. Uh, but I will, in the guide, I'll show you how to generate those certificates. All I do is I have a, on my Bravo host, I have a folder with all the certificates and every post service uses the same certificates. On my alpha host, I have a folder with certificates and every ghost based mesh instance uses the same certificates. So you basically just need a folder with your certs on each of these hosts and you're good. I just reuse them all and it's totally fine. And then like I said before, conversion from 1.2.13 straight to 1.3 post as a service. You have to move over your your post data metadata.json. You have to move over your key.bin. You have to move over both your NIPOST files if you have them. And you have to move over your post.bin. And I said move over, but just copy over. You don't want to actually remove those from your post uh, from your post data folder. It's good to just leave those in there. And then uh, copy them over to your ghost space mesh instance. So let's actually just jump into the terminal here. This is my alpha host. And just to give you an idea, what I've done, I have a disk that I have mounted, SDA. It's a two terabyte disk uh, for my node service. And I'm eventually going to add another two terabyte disk because I have about 60 nodes that I need to add here. And um, Eventually, I won't need all this storage space, but for now, I'm actually probably going to need all this storage space. I haven't moved everything over yet. I'm saving a bunch of nodes for the guide, so for a video, so I can actually do it live. Uh, but I've got some nodes moved over. So if we do CD, media, I'm just putting a bunch of them in node service. We can see I've got not all these nodes have been moved over yet. I think I'm just at 22. Uh, as, as far as I've gone, I'm working on uh, doing the rest of these. But if we look at these folders, so if I do ls node 01, I have a config.json. This is the config.mainnet.json. I've just renamed it to config.json because I got sick and tired of saying mainnet, even though it, like it's implied. And then inside my config, um, It's really simple. Everything's basically the same. So you still have, you know, the um, data folder. That's where your state.sql is. You have your listeners. Um, now this is a TLS listener on 94. And then you're going to have your certs directory. And then um, just your listen port, your min, low, high, if you have a public node. 
And then, like I said, smashing start is false. So uh, that's all you're going to need for your config. And then inside the node 01 key, I have, as I mentioned before, key.bin, my two nipost files, post.bin, and postdata metadata.json. When you do the conversion, it's going to put this dot back at the end of these. Uh, that's kind of how you know that the conversion went through. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. I don't know. I don't think you need these after the conversion is done, but I've just kept them there because they're just sitting in a folder. It doesn't hurt anything. Uh, so I'm just, I left everything there. And then if we back out one, or actually didn't mean to do that. Um, if we, I'm just going to go into user one. And if I ls sm data, actually, let's do that. We can see that now we have these node state files. So the node state is where now the post app in and the nipost files are. I believe one of the nipost files is still going to be in this key.bin directory, but eventually all of the nipost files are going to be moved to the uh, node state database. And then state.sql. Mine's at 27 uh, gigabytes. I think I need to prune it. For some reason, if you sync from scratch on the latest version, it doesn't like prune the database because it's of whatever reason. But I believe you can manually prune it if you want. I'm going to give that a test. But anyways, that's basically how it's set up. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I, I, I ran into some issues early on, but as far as I can tell, everything is working now. I, I don't think that there's going to be any issues come cycle gap, but I do want to let everybody know, like, this is new for me too. There might be issues. I don't know. I haven't gone through a cycle gap yet. Uh, my node or my post service registers with my node service. As far as I can tell, everything's working. There's not a lot of feedback, like everything with Space Mesh. Like, I don't know why they're so resistant to giving us feedback about whether our setups are working correctly. I'm literally just gonna have to wait for the cycle gap, hope everything is good. And if something breaks, hope I can figure it out on the day of the cycle gap. So anyways, that's an intro to version 1.3 post as a service. I'm going to do a few things. One, I'm going to create a GitHub and I'm going to put my stack file from Docker for both my node service and my post service. I'm going to put my config file for both private and public. And I'll do my Prometheus file in there as well. And anything else I can think of that would be useful, I'll throw in there. I'm going to do another video and the video is probably going to be the what I'm basically doing now, which is converting my 1.2.13 to version 1.3 post as a service. But I might just upgrade one in place and then explain how to go from version 1.3 to version 1.3 post as a service. I'm not totally sure. I, I've been spending so much time doing this upgrade. I really want to get back to coding and like doing some more tools for the community. Uh, there's some cool stuff coming for Team 24, so shout out if you want a 24-hour cycle gap. Uh, the and honestly, if you want a less congested cycle gap, use Team 24. Uh, we're we're definitely onboarding lots of users, but we've just stood up a second cycle gap, so now you can proof uh, once per week. So if you want to split your post data half and half. Uh, the fee is the same. You can use both. You don't have to pay extra to use both of our cycle gaps. It's a flat 2.5% fee. You get access to all of our Poet servers. And even though we're running 24-hour Poet servers, we typically can match as far as uh, rewards go per terabyte. We can typically match the 12-hour, which is absolutely amazing. You're basically uh, getting a twice as much time to proof and you're only paying a 2.5% fee, you're not even getting a reduction in fees. Now we can't guarantee that every time because if the Space Mesh team upgrades and uh, you know optimizes their poets, then it's not gonna be as good. But either way, uh, Team 24, I wanna get back to making some tools uh, specifically for Team 24. 
and uh, some Tater Tracker stuff because I know people have been asking for a lot of things with Tater Tracker, uh, but we'll see uh, how long it takes me to convert everything over and hopefully it doesn't all collapse during the cycle gap. So anyways, this should be good long term, but for now, you know, big changes like this are always scary. Hopefully this video helps. I will for sure see you in the next one if you're curious how to get everything running.